And at the end of the day, if you're not using some sort of specialized workload that needs some native capability of a particular hyperscaler, Oracle will perform just fine. And it should be on the list of contenders because of your ability to save money and without giving up performance. So I applaud them for not just mimicking the hyperscalers out there. So rather than mimicking AWS or Azure, Oracle invested in hybrid and multi-cloud capabilities that embrace existing on-prem and cross-cloud realities. So this flexibility, which is very well done, makes transition risks manageable for legacy customers and modern adopters alike. So if people are looking to move into cloud, they're looking for opportunities to adjust the architecture to exactly what they need. And the thing is, if the public cloud providers are basically stating everything must move into the public cloud space in order for it to work or basically deliver on the promises of cloud computing, many enterprises are not necessarily going to bite on that these days. So they're looking for flexible infrastructure where they're able to deploy things as multi-cloud, you know, cross-cloud capabilities, the ability to have hybrid capabilities. In essence, the ability to have a flexible architecture and your ability to adapt the technology to the exact needs of the enterprise. And Oracle, I think, uh, has an innovative approach in making that happen. They're not pushing you one way or the other. They're pushing you to the solution that you need, and they're able to adapt around the solution or the business needs. And I think that's genius.